there is a lot out there when it comes to what to put your whisky into. So I thought I'd offer some of the options that I've got today and kind of give some pros and cons as to what I like, what I don't tend to use, and sort of if you were going to buy one or two, what should you get, basically. So you'll notice I've got in front of me um, a more sort of traditional style of glass than I normally have whiskies out of. Um, this is a rocks tumbler. Um, if you've ever been to a cocktail bar and you're a bit of a kleptomaniac, you've probably stolen one of these as well. I think I actually bought this one, which is unusual for me. Did I just say that out loud? This is sort of what people characterize as your typical whiskey glass. You know, when you see people drinking whiskey in films and stuff, this is more likely than not what they will be drinking out of. Um, I should quickly have a note as well about the whiskey that's in here today. Um, I've got Bladnock 10 in here. I know I keep going on about this whiskey. I will review it at some point. Don't panic. Some pros and cons about this one. Pro, it's a chunky, big, hefty glass. That's not going anywhere. Um, and if you get, you know, one that's kind of nice like this, you know, cut crystal, it can also look quite stylish. Um, big con with this one, it's a terrible nosing glass. It's basically straight-sided. There's a lot of air getting in, there's plenty of evaporation, and it's not channeling many of the aromas to you. So yeah, you're getting more kind of like the, sort of just a, a blank ethanol nose. One thing about this glass, um, it's easy to drink out of. You know, nice easy sipping experience, and actually the whiskey still tastes fine. You know, it's not like it's ruining the whiskey. I think this is better for something like, say, a mixed drink, like a, a rum and coke or a cocktail or something like that. Um, but for whiskey, I wouldn't use it myself personally. Moving quickly on from the rocks glass, next we've got this strange creature. Um, I've had this glass for well over a year, and I bought it because I thought it would make some pretty sexy photos, and then I've never used it. This is what's called a dragon glass, I'm reliably told. Um, mine's a little bit different. Most dragon glasses, you will have sort of a squared off lip. This one has a rounded lip, but you've still got the flat sides and sort of this diamond shape. The idea of it is that it stands at an angle. Um, and then you drink from there. It looks fantastic. They advertise it as being stable and not rocking, but I mean, that's just not true. That's just a outright lie. This didn't cost me much. I I went into TK Maxx and I saw it and I was like, yeah, I'll get that. And it was like four quid. Um, I do know that some of these can go for ridiculous amounts of money. So be wary of that. In terms of drinking out of it, an immediate thing is that because it's at that strange angle, you're getting a lot of evaporation, and fair play to them, it is tapered. So unlike with, say, the rocks glass, where it's completely open, it does taper. But the problem with that being, it's basically the same size, so eh, is it making much of a difference? Not really. Plus you've got this unusual thing where it kind of tapers and then goes out and then back in again, which is a little bit odd. For nosing, actually, it's not terrible. It does do some of that funneling effect. Um, and to drink out of, you know, it's still... It's not an unpleasant experience, but one thing I will say, actually, that I'm noticing with this one, because, again, of the size of it, I'm wanting to take bigger gulps, and whiskey is a sipping liquor, principally. You know, you shouldn't be necking it, you shouldn't be throwing it back. It is. It's there for sipping. Um, would I use this glass? I mean, I'm probably going to use it on Instagram, to be honest. Um, if you want to check out my Instagram, there's links. Um, but it's not my first choice when it comes to drinking whiskey. Um, mainly just because I think it's just too bulky as well. Great for photography, great for showing off, but for actual purpose, I'd maybe give one a pass as well. Next, we're moving on to this. And you're probably sat there saying, well, that's still a tumbler. And whilst it is, um, I wanted to mention this one because I've noticed a fair few distilleries have started adopting this sort of... I think, historically, they've been water glasses. But I've noticed a fair few distilleries have started adopting this glass as sort of a go-between for a nosing glass and a tumbler. So you'll notice it's got a very heavy base, not going anywhere. And actually, it's really nice to hold in the hand. It feels really sturdy. But you'll notice it's got sort of a teardrop shape. So it's doing that funneling of aromas as well. So you can kind of use this as a nosing glass, not to the same degree as some of the glasses we'll be getting onto in this video, but it's 
it's sort of a handy go-between. I know a few people that don't like using like Glen Cairns or Capitas or those kind of glasses. They feel they're too dainty. They don't they don't enjoy them. They want to hold a rocks glass or you know something with a bit more heft to it. So this is a good go-between for people that take their whiskey quite seriously but also want this kind of a form factor. And actually I do use this from time to time. Not often, but if I am going to use like a tumbler style glass, this is the kind that I go for. You do get the aromas more from it, which is fantastic. And being as it is a standard drinking glass, there's no problem with getting the liquid into your mouth. I'm not really sure I need to mention too much about these glasses when it comes to the actual drinking experience because they all function. You know, you're not drinking out of them and they're like spilling all over your mouth. It's not like a cereal bowl or a bucket or something. So yeah, they all function fine. But I want to quickly mention that as sort of like a, a nice go between. Anyone who follows whiskey to a semi anorak level will probably have come across this glass. People that even don't know much about whiskey have probably seen this thing at some point. This is the Norlin glass and it is probably the most heavily engineered whiskey glass there's ever likely to be. It's very aesthetically pleasing as you can see you've got these beautiful sort of cutouts at the bottom it's got a square base and then it produces this round bowl through the magic of glass making um, and then you'll actually notice there's a void in the middle um, and then you've got this sort of nosing cup area. Um, one thing to say about this actually, because of how it's made, rather than sort of taper in, it actually flares out. I'm not quite sure if you can see that, but it's a, it's a consequence of how it's made, essentially. Um, so rather than focusing, if anything, it's going to be allowing more of the aromatics of the whiskey out. That having been said, I've had some good experiences with this glass. Um, they are a bit pricey. They look amazing. You know, you look like a serious... Do you look like a serious whiskey drinker or do you look like a bit of a dweeb? It's a little bit of both, to be honest. Um, but you can hold this like a tumbler and the heat transfer isn't going to happen. So that's, that's a big plus. You're not going to be warming the whiskey up, which is something that you don't really want to be doing with whiskey anyway. Temperature plays a big factor when it comes to your enjoyment of whiskey. You don't want it too cold, but you also don't want it too hot. To nose it, because despite the fact that it does flare out, it is a relatively narrow lip. So it does allow for some of that funneling to come through. It's still a perfectly respectable nosing glass. Um, to drink out of, I'd say this one's the most awkward. While it's still fine, it's got a very thick lip due to how the whole thing is produced and created. As a consequence of that, it does feel kind of like you're sipping out of sort of like, sort of like the big plastic beakers that you used to have at school. Maybe that was just my school, I don't know. But it does, it, it feels a little unusual. Um, it doesn't feel particularly grown up, I have to say. It's a little intrusive in some respects. I've done some side-by-side -side comparisons to this and a couple of other glasses in my own personal time. There's not a video out there. Um, and I have found that there is a, a nominal flavour difference when you compare them side by side. Different aspects of the whisky do come out in these different glasses, so it does make a difference, and that is worth considering. They are a little bit pricey. They released a limited edition matte black one, and the internet went nuts for that, um, and it sold out within, like, minutes. I like the glass. I don't use it that often. Every now and then, if I have sort of a, an inkling for this glass, I will reach for it, but it's not my go-to. But this is my go-to. Um, this is the Glen Cairn glass, and this is sort of your prototypical whiskey glass. It was designed to sort of be the whiskey drinker's glass, and it has some fascinating features, um, such as you can obviously see it's quite bulb-shaped, so it's quite bulbous here, which allows a lot of air to get into the whiskey to allow that aeration to happen. But you'll also notice there's more of a pronounced taper of this one. That's specifically for nosing. You'll see how I'm holding it as well. There's this foot as opposed to like a stem, um, which some people aren't too keen on. I've seen a lot of people hold them like that. And it's not really the ideal way to do it. You're supposed to hold it by the foot and kind of tilt in. It does make the glass that little bit awkward. And I do know that some people kind of favor stemmed glasses over this type for that reason. I've seen some people as well hold them very precariously, like having their pinky out and stuff. And some people aren't too keen on that. Also, you've got to bear in mind, if people have issues with like their tendons in their hands, this is not going to be a comfortable experience. So we do have to consider that as well. But for me, it's one of my go-tos. I do, 
I do enjoy this glass very much. It's fantastic for nosing. Um, I use this glass the most on the channel. If you've seen any of my other whiskey reviews, you'll see that this is the one that I go to. Occasionally I'll chop and change into something else just for a bit of difference, but this is kind of the one that I reach for. Not least because um, when you work in hospitality, they give these things out like candy. But I do have to say as well, because they are so widespread, um, they're not that expensive unless you go to a tourist tat shop in Edinburgh, in which case they will rip your skin off as payment for one of these. Um, avoid those places. If they're playing obnoxious, poppy kind of bagpipey music outside the store and everything's made out of tartan, avoid it like the plague, for Christ's sake. Because of how it's designed as well, a lot of the whiskey catches in the bulb and you have to tilt it back further. To my way of thinking, that encourages you to sip the whiskey more than it does neck it. Um, again, I know some people that aren't such a fan of the fact that you have to move your head back further. Um, I don't mind it. Um, and I, you'd, you'd have to go some ways to choke on whiskey, so I'm not too worried about throwing your head back a little bit further. We have this unusual one. This is sort of a miniature brandy snifter, for want of a better way of putting it. Um, I wouldn't recommend using like a full brandy balloon because that's that's going to cause some issues but this particular one you've got a stem there if you prefer holding it like that you can still hold it kind of like a Glencairn as the base and you do have again that bulb shape and it does taper a little bit there are other kinds of stemmed whiskey glassware out there that use longer stems to make them easier to hold on to um, this is not the ideal one and I don't really see many people using this one but it is a glass that I have available to me so I thought I'd at least mention it. And then next we have what you might be surprised to hear me call the industry standard because if you think about whiskey you probably think of the Glencairn glass whereas you think of this kind of glass you probably think of something like sherry. Um, as a big advocate for sherry I wouldn't recommend pouring sherry into one of these glasses. I prefer a wine glass for that but that's another conversation. This is a Capita to give it its proper name. It's got a longer stem, so it's easier to grip. And you'll also notice, again, it's got a bowl shape, but it's less pronounced. It's more of a tulip shape, but you've still got that taper. And actually, I think I'm right in saying, yes, I am indeed. The lip of this glass is thinner. And because of the length, it allows again for that whole fuddling of the nosing experience. These are excellent glasses to drink whiskey out of, and there are variants on the same theme of this particular kind of glass. Um, I do enjoy using these ones, and they're the kinds that you'll often find used by distillers or tasting groups, or even a lot of whiskey bars will use this one. Um, it's, it was always sort of the industry standard before the Glencairn came along. The Glencairn glass is a relatively modern invention, so a lot of people don't like using it because they kind of see it as a Johnny come lately, and they prefer either a Capita or a Rocks glass, so. There's sort of a little miniature war going on with that one because some people do care about this. That's why I'm making this video in the first place. One thing I will say about this glass, um, it is frail. Um, Capisa glasses tend to be made out of very thin glass, which does mean that the whiskey inside is more prone to temperature fluctuations in the surrounding environment because it's less insulated, but also just in terms of frailty, it is more brittle. Um, I had two of these originally. One of them broke when it fell. It must have been about a quarter of an inch off of the draining board and it just shattered into a thousand pieces. Um, I didn't even think a fall that small could actually break anything, but I had evidence to the contrary. By comparison, uh, Glen Cairn, this is also sort of my traveling glass. If I'm going somewhere with a whiskey, I'll take a couple of these with me. They look and they kind of feel a little bit brittle, but they're actually very hardy. Um, they're tougher than they look. I did break one of these the other night but it fell off of this table onto a hardwood floor, so I don't mind that. It is still glass at the end of the day, um, but you know, a few bumps and scrapes, it's gonna survive it fine. Those are my thoughts on whiskey glasses. Uh, let me know down below, do you have a personal preference to whiskey glasses? Are you a rocks fan? Do you use the dragon glass? Have you had a chance to use a Norlin glass? How, what do you think of it? Are you a fan of the Capita? I know a fair few people are fans of Capitas or other whiskey glasses that are out there. There's one called a 1920 Blender's Balloon. It looks ridiculous, um, and I, I, I kind of don't rate it.